high school science teacher. I teach 10th grade biology, um, 11th and 12th grade anatomy and physiology, and the 12th grade geology. I'm the first Native American to teach science at the high school here, and I'm the first female. <laughs> After I'm done teaching, in the evenings I work on getting my master's in chemistry and it has an emphasis in education so I can provide my students with college credit. I drive an hour to and from the reservation every day because it's the nearest teaching job that was available. Life on the reservation is so different. Anything social, anything like movies, theaters, in any direction, it's an hour drive. Okay, so most of the times we didn't really go and do any of those things. Can I help you? In a little while, okay? Not now. My mom and my aunt have been my rock to fall back on um, because they've always been there to help with Carter whenever I need. It's like that saying, it takes a village to raise a child because our culture is like a big family kind of thing where wherever we go, we always meet someone who's related to us. We kind of all put our schedules together and figure out ways of when Carter's always with each of us so he's never without us. This is our house, kind of like the females of the family. So like my grandma and then her daughters, they all live in this area. And I feel like it's empowering to be able to call this place our home. When I moved away for college, it was just like a culture shock almost because you're not used to all the restaurants and all the different foods and the different people too because you kind of grew up on the reservation, you see all Native Americans and then you leave and there's so many different people. I was married for three years and I was a senior in college when I had Carter. My mother helped me raise my children and um, when it was turned for Lena after her divorce, we, I told her, we, we can do it. I know she was going through a lot because he was fighting for, the, for Carter too. It required so much money. I paid for a lawyer fee. And so as a result, we finally got Lena back with Carter. We've had this land as far back as we can remember. I don't know, it's been ours forever. In our clan system, we have four clans. Mother, my father's clan, my grandfather on my maternal side, and my grandfather on my paternal side. All of the children, like my sister's children, they're all siblings. In that way, then, we know that um, we take care of our children. So my sister's children are my children. My children are my sister's children. That's it. That's the song I sang to become Miss Navajo Nation for $5,000. In my marriage, it was just very lonely. And then the depression came on. I didn't even know what postpartum was when I had Carter, because in Native American culture, it's, we don't really know anything about that. And when I was going through it, I didn't know it was depression from like all the hormones and all of that stuff and the anxiety from that. So a lot of it was hard um, because I was alone and I didn't have any friends or anybody. We kind of just left one day. We left everything in Washington and we just drove and we came back here. And it's been so amazing to be able to come home and be with my family and Carter's growing and he sees that I'm happy and he's grown so much. <laughs> the preschool is on the reservation and it's a federally like funded program. Navajo children go there and they learn a lot. Like they learn Navajo traditions. He'll be learning like traditional dances throughout the year. Our culture and different indigenous people appreciate music. Everything has a rhythm. Everything has music in them. Even the brushes in the fields, the wind brushing across. And then animals, that's how they communicate through sounds, different pitches they use to raise their youngest. So I'll tell the story of, of our upbringing and enjoying horses.
for Carter since he is part Scottish, they try to incorporate some of those things. So like they'll have him learn some kind of dance that's related to also like that side of his family. In our marriage, we live paycheck to paycheck because it was mostly his income and it was always like, well, I'm gonna get paid Friday anyways, so we can do what we want. It was just like we would, by Wednesday, we were like waiting until Friday again. And then the next Wednesday or Thursday came around and we were waiting till Friday again. And that was just like the mentality that was to the entire time during our marriage. And then after I left the marriage, I realized that I had all these things I wanted to do. I just never did it because I was stuck at home and I just learned to budget. And then once we learned that, it became a lot easier to manage all of the bills. Carter burned his hands when he was about one. He was walking and he touched the stove. We were without insurance for like four months when that happened. When we first got the bill for Carter's burn, it was close to $80,000. The book that I read, um, How to Stop Living Paycheck to Paycheck, it really helped because it gave me like a Google spreadsheet that kind of helped me figure out like where I need to save and like stuff like that. Like I set up a savings account for him and then like just our emergency funds and then like what's left over kind of goes all to bills. So now that we're paying for that, it's like we're almost like down to like 30,000 left and I'll be done paying for it at this rate when he's about seven years old. Elena's a good mom. She's a busy mom. She's determined very determined young lady. She's always been like that ever since she was small. I'm also an online fitness coach. I work with clients online and we help them, mostly moms. We just kind of like share a Zoom call and work out together and then we kind of help each other out with um, accountability. It's really helped with the emotional side, I think. Fitness actually pays for the extra stuff we want to do. Um, I got Carter a new tablet for his birthday, and it also pays for a lot of our random trips that we take because he likes to go to the zoo, and the nearest zoo is three hours away. Here on this flute tells a story of our infancy down from where you were in the womb of your mother. Can I, can I brush my tongue? Yeah, brush your tongue. Um, he's very, uh, he listens to everything, and then he picks up on a lot of stuff. There was even hidden, hidden talents that were given you. Carter means everything. In my marriage, he was the one thing that kept me going every day. And I think he kind of felt that, and he kind of knew that mom wasn't happy. You were born to your mother and your father, too. Like, ready for bed. He never spoke a word while I was married. He just never said anything, and um, he would reach for stuff, and that was it. They thought he was autistic because he didn't speak to anyone. Then, of course, we don't want to forget the clouds and then the rain, which nourishes. What's that? Over there? He just kind of closed himself off to everything, but he gave me the strength to leave that marriage, even though it was hard. And. Uh, the first time he said mom was eight months ago, and it was so amazing. So Ado Din Sado Kudetnan, you started developing those talents. Carter is, um, keeps us going. Look at my phone! It's a dinosaur bone! Oh, wow. And then once it's born, then it's a childhood when it laughs. <laughs> He's definitely my saving grace. <laughs>